This hymn has always inspired me. It's very beautiful. And it's extremely poignant for taking Amrit because it refers especially to water, especially for a longing for a water, for, for Wahe Guru, for God, and for Amrit. So it's all relevant. Um, and I'm going to play you first uh, some music, which is just a short excerpt for about three minutes, okay? It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to actually read out the hymn. Um, Obviously, I don't speak much Punjabi at all, you know? so this will just be um, my attempt at trying to convey my message, my message of my experience of Sikhi. You know, we don't preach that everyone should become Sikh, so it's not one of those messages. It's why I, individually, over a period of eight years, eight years, chose to become Sikh. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver. Only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver, and the apple of my eye. You're my friend and you're my brother, even though you are a king. I love you much more than any other, so much more than anything. Words and music by Martin Nistrom. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. That's an older version with older language. Thank you for inviting me today to this community of the Panth. It is an honour to be invited, especially as you're still here and I am late. The hymn that, I have just that you have just heard is from my Christian background. It sums up my search for God amidst a troubled world and amidst a very troubled soul. So what has this Christian hymn got to do with this Gora talking at this Gudwara? I suppose the question is, what hasn't it got to do with Sikhi? The reason the search for God is like the deer who pants for the water, dry, thirsty, and not satisfied until it finds the water and it drinks. Can you see where I'm going with this? Yes, that's right, I'm referring to taking Amrat which is what I did a few weeks ago. Just to show you that I've not made this up and my Punjabi isn't very good, I'm gonna read you uh, what the actual translation says in the Anand Saab. It says, your thirst cannot be quenched by any method until you get God's nectar. When you get the nectar and drink God's nectar, the thirst will never trouble you again. This, God's nectar, is obtained by one who, due to his previous pious acts, meets the true guru. That's in the sacred Nitnam. So I'm not here as a wise granti or spiritual leader, but as someone who would like to share my journey of faith with you. My journey as a Sikh has only just begun. Do any of you know what year, in, what year it was in which I was born? Has anyone told you? Can anyone guess what year I was born? I'm between 25 and 27 years of age. I'm not gonna give the uh, date away. Any idea? I was born in the 80s. Someone must know what year I was born. Can anyone guess? Yes. I was born in 1984. My name was Barry Christopher Blower. Blower, yep, yeah, great. People used to take the mickey at school and make lots of uh, comments which I couldn't even repeat because Maharaj is here. So I changed it to Lyndon Barrington. 
I wanted to keep Barry, so I changed it to Barrington. I was born in Wolverhampton. My parents are divorced, and life has had many unsettling times, including moving house on many occasions, more than I care to remember. Life has led me into paths of depression, feelings of inadequacy, but conversely, there have been times when my ego has caused me to be arrogant and too proud. But I have always sought to find God, where he, and I say he cautiously, where he can be found. So how on earth did I find Sikki, born in Wolverhampton? Well, that's a very sick area, but how did I find Sikki? I'm Western, white, Christian background. When I was young, my dad was living in Bridge North in a flat opposite a beautiful parish church. And I kept asking my dad if I could go inside and maybe attend a service. My dad took me to the church on one Sunday morning but after 30 minutes, my dad said, let's go, son. He was not religious and didn't feel at ease there. After that, he took me to a shop and there were copies of the Bible and I asked for a copy. So my dad bought a beautiful illustrated children's Bible for me, which I still have. After that, my mum asked me if I wanted to be baptized and I said, yes, but she wasn't religious herself. My parents didn't really share any of their religious beliefs with me. They just allowed me to have a Bible. They allowed me to go to church, but apart from that, Nothing in terms of spirituality. After that, I began attending a church and singing in a choir. As my parents lived apart, I lived in various churches. I attended various churches in my local community where my parents lived. They would willingly take me to the church in the car, but they didn't come in. After that, I went to the University of Aberdeen where I had many problems, including severe depression. I was not old enough to be 400 miles away from home in northeast Scotland, aged 18. But during this time, I met Carmelite friars, who were like monks, who influenced my spiritual quest. We prayed together and spent time doing meditation. I came home after failing the first year of university and began working in a local care home. When I eventually left home and moved into an urban area, I was fascinated by all the culture around me. On the bus, I passed Sikh Gurdwaras, Hindu Mandars, and the mosque, all of which I visited. In the main, these were educational visits used to satisfy my curiosity and my interest in religion, and comparative religion had something special about it. They all had something special about them. My visits all had something special to offer, but they were mostly educational visits. The first time I went to a Gurdwara in Wolverhampton, what was that like? When I went into the Gurdwara, I was very nervous. I went into the hallway of the temple, a converted house in Waterloo Road, Wolverhampton, which some of you may know. I was asked to remove my shoes and covered my head. I asked if I was allowed to go upstairs into the temple area. Do I need an appointment, I thought. The second time I went, I passed a bedroom where a man with long hair was lying down and he smiled at me, beautiful, smiled beautifully at me. On going into the Gurdwara, a kindly old man came to me and gave me a piece of fruit and a lolly. He said, and I said to him, oh, it's you, you were the man lying on the bed. He looked so different in his turban and barna. It was the same person. He explained the essential Sikh doctrine that God is only one and he gave me prashad. I sat down. It felt so peaceful, but I was always a little on edge. Lots of elderly old ladies watched me curiously every time I stood up. They looked and I was so worried I had done something wrong. I never found an opening or place where I could really learn about Sikhism and its teachings in depth. So I asked a few aunties in an Indian charity shop to show me how to tie a turban. I wore it a few times but hadn't got the confidence to wear it and to ignore the strange looks from the public. This was in 2003. I began wearing a bandana for work and a kippon. I don't understand why, it just felt right, but I really didn't understand Sikhism that well. It, looking back, I find it quite embarrassing that I wore the kippon then because I didn't really understand much about a kippon and about Sikhi, so if I'd have been asked, I'd have been in a tricky situation. Anyway, I wanted to know more, and I eventually found DTF Bookshop, Soho Road, Birmingham. It's not an adverting marketing campaign for them, but 
that was one of the sources, one of the few sources where I could find information about Siki. I met a lovely lady there and I purchased a nitnem. Could you play the CD, please? I hope you don't object to Miss Pooja, but it is a religious version of the Mole Mantra, so she's not my favourite, but this is a beautiful um, ekonka that she has sung, absolutely beautiful, and I often listen to it in the morning. <coughs> So you know the mall mantra. I don't need to read it out to you, but we're going to hear it anyway. On reading the first page of the Japji Saab, I felt like I'd found a pot of gold. It was beautiful, universal and enlightening. I began reading parts of it in the morning, sitting at a table in, the mis in my miserable bedsit. The words also brought comfort. I treated the, I treated it, the nitnam with great respect I didn't realise I needed a stand, but I put a cover down. And this was in 2003, just beginning, starting out, trying to do all I could to, to try and practice Sikhi in my own way, because I couldn't communicate with people because of language and because of other things. It was very hard for me to actually start to understand Sikhi and to start worshipping. So I started to just read parts of it, particularly the Japsab, first page, absolutely beautiful. It's only one God. That means we don't need to fight. There is no Hindu, there is no Muslim, God is only one. We can listen to that. Absolutely beautiful one by, by Miss Pooja. Is it coming on? It's not working? Okay. Light of Guru's grace, I hope it comes on. However, because of my Christian background, I felt bad. I felt like I was committing adultery by doing matatic at the Gudwada. After all, it does say in the Bible, I shouldn't worship other gods. I shouldn't bow down. That's because I didn't understand Siki then. So I decided to give my nitnam to somebody. But I kept my kippon, which was gathering dust in my grandmother's drawer um, for ages. It's the same one I wear. It's this one. I thought I should give it to a grantee because it doesn't belong to me. But I thought, no, it's special. I want to keep that for some reason. I want to keep it. I now wear it every day. After a long search, including living in a Benedictine monastery and even practicing Judaism, but never converting, I began to attend the Gurdwara again. It was peaceful and allowed the stress to just fall off me. But again, there were long stares, there were people who looked, and I wanted to know more about Sikhi. I met, might get the chance to have a 10 minute talk with a grantee who's bro broken English, but any more complex questions just couldn't be answered. So I went back to the university, at the University of Wolverhampton, and I met the chaplain. And I said, is there a Sikh society here? I want to go to the Sikh society if there is one. I was quite nervous, but they were very welcoming and I went along. And bingo, there I met many young people with good English who pointed me in the right direction. I had access to all the information I needed and wanted. I learned more, and they told me about we websites like SeekNet, things like that that could be really useful. I had recently moved to Bearwood and wanted to find a Gurdwara to attend. Wherever I lived, I found a Gurdwara. I obviously wanted to find Sikhi. I went a couple of times to the big Gurdwaras in Soho Road, Birmingham, and Smethwick High Street. But I wanted someone on my doorstep, and I found it. If this isn't Wahe Guru in action, I don't know what is. On my second day of living in Bearwood, I was lost. I had missed my bus stop and was about 1.5 miles away from my house. It was dark and I was worried and I didn't know the area. And I walked up and down hundreds of times and I was lost. What should I see on my journey but a Gurdwara that used to be a Methodist church with kundas on it? I'm going to go there the next day, I thought. I went there the next day. I went there one evening and I sat at the back and the teacher gave a sermon in Punjabi that lasted about 45 minutes and I did not understand a word. I was beginning to get disheartened as I couldn't understand what he was saying. Suddenly, his loud hypnotic voice 
which was always gentle, said, you at the back there, you have been listening very patiently to me speaking in another language. He then went on and gave me a talk, especially for me in English about Sikhi and its main teachings on universal religion. Again, he didn't say, by the way, everyone should become a Sikh and it's the best thing, thing since sliced bread. He told me the universal teachings to respect other religions. And that's what I really, really respect. No one's saying I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. No one's saying I need to reach God, but only through the prophet Muhammad. They are telling me that I can find God in many different ways. And this is the Sikh version. Universal religion, ekon ka, sat nam, karta porak, nebo nive, akal morat, angoni, seabang, gur prasad. All I ever wanted was that. I found Wahiguru, I found Bahada Singh Ji, the assistant priest, and he became my teacher. Then I asked him, What should I do if I want to become a Sikh? He invited me to attend Punjabi classes. I did so. This is after eight years of trying to find a Gurdwara. At university, the Sikh society had afternoons of Simran, and I met some wonderful people, including people that are here now, Kulwant from Sundar Arts and his wife, Gasunda, who are artists. And I met them first and foremost because they were talking about Simran. They were doing questions and answers at uni. And I first met, when I first met them, they gave, me, they gave, they gave a few spirit, spiritual talks at the uni. And one day I said to the president of Sikh Sok, I'm not joking, please don't be offended, please don't be offended, I'm not taking the mickey, could someone teach me to tie a turban please? And I was so, so worried, but guess what the answer was? Yes, no problem. They gave me some material and I learned a simple round turban style. Apparently it's called the I'm late for work turban, I don't know if you've heard of that one, but that's what they told me it's called. Huh? I said I would wear it once a week to get used to it and to see if I really wanted to be a Sikh that badly. But after two weeks, I said, do you know what, I don't care anymore about other people's looks. I will wear my turban if I want to. And I wore my turban all the time, in, well, in my free time, and then I started to wear it all the time for work. Some of the Sangat said, I shouldn't be wearing it, I'm not baptized and it's offensive, I should wear a podka if I want to. I thought, okay, and that, that hurt quite a bit, to be honest. Uh, and I didn't go in for a week, and they said, oh, we didn't offend you last week, did they? I said, no, no, you didn't offend me, but that's how I felt inside. About two months later, I asked to take Amrit, <coughs> and on the 17th of March, at midday, I did so. I don't make decisions easily, even buying a new sofa for me is a big deal, you know. I don't find it easy to decide many things in life, but this was one thing where I confidently asked to take Amrit and I couldn't believe it was going to happen. But I desired it and it did happen. What was it like the night before I took Amrit? The night before I took Amrit was a very special. I knew that I wouldn't sleep that night. I was excited and couldn't wait. So I asked the Granti if I could stay in the guest quarters that night. And I went upstairs into a makeshift sleeping area. And there were thin mattresses about that thin, that thick, on the floor to sleep on. It wasn't the Ritz Hotel, you know, but I would prefer to stay in the Gurdwara any day. It was very comfortable. I didn't need anything else. It was like being in a locked room that held me, not in bondage, but in a room where I knew I could sleep near to Guru Granth Sahib. The room was quite full and quite small, with only a little light, and in the background, I could hear some older Singhs speaking gently in Punjabi. I couldn't understand a word. It was like being in another country. But the reassuring, calm tone of those who were present, representing generations of Sikhs and my soon-to-become ancestors, helped me to sleep. Without speaking to them in any English at all, I knew I was in good company. Well, in the morning, I got up at about 2.30 a.m., I had a good hot ishnan and began, and began to listen to the Panjbani booming through the microphone. I must confess, I went back to sleep, but I listened in the background. At about 4.30 a.m., I got up and listened to the Bani on my phone using YouTube. As you know from the last time I was here, there are some rather 
cutting YouTube Barneys that just really are hard on the ears at four in the morning. But I wanted to listen to them, so I did. But that's why now, I'm glad I said that, because at the end of the talk last time, with Harvinder Kaur, someone gave me a lovely CD, which I listen to every day now, which is great. So I'm glad I said that. I hope I've not offended anyone, but some of them are really like not very good quality. When I, on the day that I took Amrit, people spoke words of encouragement to me in the morning, and then after studying Punjabi in the class with the little children, everyone quickly left the divan apart from those taking Amrit. This was it. It was about to happen. Would it be formal? Would the Panj Piara accept me? What if they said, no, you're not taking Amrit today? I was really worried and thought, does that mean I would have to leave the Gurdwara? Would I come back again? The Panj Piyare came out of the Sachkhand. Uncle Jibihada held a large kippan. He gave a talk wearing his sunglasses. He had come specially to perform the ceremony, even though he had, was recovering from an eye operation, but he was one of the few people that could speak good English and give a good talk to me. After a discourse, he came he, and said, I could come forward. I was one of the first. In fact, I think I was the first to take Amrit that day. What surprised me was that the ceremony was more about what I did rather than what was richly done to me. Water, Amrit, was poured into my hands and then I drank it five times and it tasted sweeter than anything I'd tasted in my life. You see, in Christian baptism, the priest actually does something to you. He pours water on you and that's it. Most of the things I had to do, I was given the water and then I had to decide to drink it. The final part was very emotional. The Panj Piara gave me a bowl and said that I may drink from it. I did so with sticky sugary water all over my beard, which does not make me look like Nicholas II or anyone else, <laughs> Ginger. I could drink it all and I couldn't get enough of it. I'd done it. It was only at that moment that I believed it was going to happen when it had happened. That had happened. That was it. I knew then I was Sikh. All of the long stares and comments were worth it. They became ephemeral. Nobody could ever dare say that I was not a Sikh now. But above all this is the fact that I have found peace through Waheguru, God, the creator. And what were the emotions? Shock, I've done it. Joy, peace, blessing, gratitude and love, and humor. That night, I was talking amongst the Sangat, and they were laughing so much. The Guru gave me so much joy that evening, and I could feel the happiness that the Amrit had created. It was like having a drug, but Amrit doesn't harm us. It heals us and produces joy, not for a split second high, like cannabis or alcohol, but gives us real joy. It was a very special day. I've got a message to young Sikhs. Do take Amrit. Do take Amrit seriously. But don't build it up so high that you can't reach it because you believe you could never do it. If you make a mistake, if you don't get up one morning and do your Panjbani, it's not the end. You're still an Amrit Dari Sikh. So don't make it so high that you put everyone on a pedestal but you could never do it. You can. Don't be put off by those who don't understand. Don't discourage a friend from taking Amrit or from practicing Sikhism just because you don't practice yourself. I think that sometimes can happen. Also, please welcome people of other faiths and people exploring Sikhi to your Gurdwaras. Do welcome strangers with love and generosity. I don't know my Gamaki yet. I use Malabis. And I say, Wahe Guru, I say, Satnam Sari Wahe Guru Ji, Satnam Sari Wahe Guru Ji. But I also say in English, peace of God, peace of mind, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. See, for me, I didn't want to become a Sikh so that I could be a teacher or save the world. That was what I wanted to do when I was a Christian. I did it sheerly, completely, and utterly selfishly for me and for nobody else in this entire world. I did it for me because I needed to do it. I needed God 
And this was one way, this was the only way that seemed to work. And I found it. One way or the other, I found that Gurdwara when I was lost, walking down the road in the middle of Bearwood, not knowing how I was going to get home or where I was. And I found that place. And I found the Guru. We don't have big signs outside saying, if you become a Sikh, everything will be perfect. If you become a Sikh, you'll be one of the chosen people. If you become a Sikh today, that's one step closer to the apocalypse because we've saved another person. No, no, no. I've just seen a sign at another Gurdwara saying, God is one, all is one, God is one. And a picture of the Ekonkar. If I look at a church, it says, you know, repent for the day is near and you all need to become Christians. And I passed the mosque. I mean, these are true stories. I've just passed the mosque on the way here. And you must read the Quran, Muhammad. You must read this and be saved and everything else. But no, if there is a sign on a Sikh temple, like I've just seen, and I've never seen one of these signs before, God is one, all is one. That's all it said. God, G-O-D, God. That's all it said. Didn't even say Wahi Guru. It just said in English, all is one, God is one. Essential teachings of Sikhi. So all you need to do is know Ekunkar. All you need to do is read the first page of the Japji song. <coughs> Someone said to me recently, we're all born Sikhs, but then we cut our hair and cut our beards, if we're men and women, legs, everything, we shave, everything. Maybe we are born all Sikhs. Maybe some people are not meant to be Sikhs. Maybe some people are meant to be Christians. There is no Hindu, there is no Muslim, God is only one. But you can find Sikhi. And in America, there, are, there is a big following, and in Canada. But I'm not here as a Gora Sikh to found a, a Gora Gudwara and to just take all the Punjabiness away from Sikhi. I've done it the hard way, and I've, I've, I've mixed within the Punjabi community, and I've found where I should be. It's, it's, it's changed me no end. And I've met people at Nanak Sagodwara who have been alcoholics and had lots of problems. And you would not believe the stories we've heard. It's obvious that this is an amazing path. One that doesn't preach and dominate and try to take over people's countries and, and, and say you must accept our religion. But when I eventually found it and I dug really deep, I found the gold. I found the pot of gold. Like that hymn that I read. I want you more than gold or silver. Only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. And I include the whole Sangha in this. You're my friend and you're my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. Because God is within. Wahi Guru is within. So we can get rid of the paradigms of God being so up there. We're down here. We're meant to be close to God. We're meant to dwell with God. God is meant to dwell within us. All of these things are said in the Bible. All of these things are found in the Nitnim. I hope that you'll enjoy, you've enjoyed listening to this story. This is one person, one journey. And I've met lots of other people that have found God. So I'm glad it wasn't easy. I just wish it had been a bit easier. But I'm glad that no one is going to preach to me. When I came to the Gurdwara, the grantee listened to me. And I, I didn't have that many conversations, but I didn't need to. I'd found someone very special. And he, he came into the Gurdwara one day when they were doing Kitan. And he came in and he said, oh, it's dark in here. I'll put the lights on. That is exactly what he was to me. And that is exactly what Wahi Guru is. Guru. Switching on the light. Switching on the light. And that is what I found in Sikhi. I listened to the Asa Diva um, about two years ago. And I felt it was calling me to live a better life. But I didn't know what it was saying at all. And then I read on Sikhnet that Asa Diva is the words calling you to lead a better moral life. I didn't understand a word of it. Just by hearing it. But I knew that it was calling me to lead a better life. 
The grantee, this particular grantee, I don't understand Punjabi at all, but I don't need to understand Punjabi to sit and listen to him talking in, in, the, in the divan. Very special person. I don't put him up here or anything, I don't worship him, nothing like that. But you know, this man with his sunglasses on, coming as Panj Piare to talk to me because there wasn't anybody that could speak good English and could also have the authority to speak well. It's just amazing and a great honor. So that's all I wanted to say really. And so thank you for waiting and thank you for being patient. Wahi Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Guru Ji Ki Fateh. So I don't know whether anyone's got any questions at all or anything they want to ask. I'm very new to this, so I'm not, I'm not here as an authority. But I can tell you what I've done, um, how I find things. Has anyone got any questions they'd like to ask? Hello. Why could you keep it? Have you had the opportunity to go to India, to Amanda's I haven't, and I've wanted to do that for a long time. Um, in October, the University of Wolverhampton have got a visit for second year students, and I'm hoping it costs a thousand pounds, which doesn't need to, but the, that's the way the uni are doing it. So I'm hoping to go then. If not, I will go to a Gudwara Nanaksar in India, because there are links there, and stay there. But it's somewhere, do you know, going to Jerusalem and going to Golden Temple, I've always wanted to do, and I've been to Jerusalem, and I've wept there for what has happened in the world but yeah the golden temple is somewhere i've always wanted to go and it looks so peaceful and i'm sure it everywhere all cultures and countries have their problems but i just want to go there even though i'm absolutely terrified of snakes and everything else but i, I <laughs> absolutely terrified of it. but i really want to go and i just want to get on that plane and uh should be fine really looking forward to it any other questions Yes? You know when you said you wish it could have been easier? Yeah. What would have made it easier? If I'd have found Nanaksa, Gurdwara Nanaksa earlier, or just met, well, like, like meetings like this, you know, where here I just meet lots of people and I can ask lots of questions. And now I've got so many places to go and ask that there's no problem. But before, like if, if I was lucky, there might be the grantee there that day who he'd tell me a bit about Sikhi and what it taught but I'd never got the opportunity to actually say yeah but look uncle you know I want to become Sikh I want to do this I want to do that you know I just needed the people to let me in some some people in the street when they see me who are Amrit Dari say why could you go so why you for tea and other people look at me blankly like I've just shot their mother you know? they actually look absolutely got uh, gobsmacked absolutely uncomfortable if I smile at them, they think I'm taking the mick because I'm wearing a distar. If I look very serious, they think they've won. I was going, walking down the street and there was, I think he was a seat guy, I don't know, he was an Asian guy, walking down the street and he was a parking ticket man. I can't stand people like that. Huh? Especially when every, every what do you call it, um, every Paul Marshy, they give tickets to all the aunties, you know, and he was so angry. And he was, li he was laughing and he was really laughing, taking the mick. And then what happened? Mr. Singh comes along. Amrit Dari, why could you ka khalsa? Why could you ki fateh? And I thought, why could you? Why could Thank God. Thank God. I was on the escalator with uh, Amrit here on the way. This lovely lady in the star. And she looked at me. She looked at me and went. And she looked at him and went. And gave him a lovely smile. And I thought that just makes a total mockery of Sikhi and it makes a mockery of, of the Khalsa really because that's not what it's all about. And I'm sure that, you know, if a Muslim said to Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Salaam Alaikum, I, must, I assume that he would have said Alaikum Salaam. Or he would have said God is only one. Wahi Guru. God is only one. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. I'm using lots of English terminology but it's what I'm used to, it's what I know. So, so, yeah, that's really important. So just making it a bit easier, you know. I have to say I'm very proud, especially when I see the women in the Dastar, because I find that there are lots of men out there that are clean shave and, and they're, not, they're not doing anything they should be doing, but I find that normally the women, if they do wear the turban, they're serious. They're either Amrit Dari or they're not wearing a turban. You know? But um, 
just people being happier, you know. Young sangha who are not practicing, or even some that are, I don't know what it is, they don't like it. It makes them uncomfortable, but racism does, does not have any place if we read the Japji Saab and the Jap Saab. Someone over there had a question? Well, I've always had a bad relationship with my mother. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother, bless her, she knows me and she knows I'm a bit mad, you know. So she, 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 she knows. I thought she would have known by now to just not say anything to my mum, but what did she say? She told her. And my mum said to me 20 times, I'm not Indian. What will Indian people think? Well, I've got lots of Sikh friends. One of them here tonight is from Malaysia. Another one is African, and they're Sikhs, but no one questioned them because they're, they're Wheatish. On Shadi.com, you know, it describes Asian as Wheatish. Wheatish. I've learned this new word, Wheatish, for Asian. But what I'm saying is, um, I said, well, come and meet these Indian people at the Gurdwara, then they'll tell you they're happy, they think it's great. But anyway, so mum hasn't come round. She said, I think it's extreme. I'm sure she thinks I've just converted and become a radical Islamist, uh, jihadist or something, you know? Uh, I mean, using words like extreme, that's from the media. My dad, at first, he didn't like it, but he's always talked to me about the Indian culture with great affection. He's got invited to Indian weddings, I'm assuming the Hindu or Sikh weddings. Uh, and then I haven't seen him for a few months, so I was worried about the star. And Kulwant dropped me off outside in Womborne, um, and I went to my dad's house, and he was absolutely fine. Uh, absolutely fine. My brother and sister, I was worried about my brother because he just turned into a teenager, and I was so worried he'd be naughty, and he was absolutely fine as well. And I was a bit naughty. I said to my dad, I've got a sewing machine in my room. I want to donate it to the Goodwara. Will you come with me and bring it? Just drop me off outside. What I really wanted him to do was come out and meet people. So what that expression, if Muhammad won't come to the mountain, then Muhammad will come to... So the people at the Gurdwara came out and spoke to my dad, and Uncle G sat in the car and spoke to my dad for 15 minutes and held his hand, and that was wonderful, because I told Uncle early that I was worried. It was interesting, because my dad was meant to take... He works for the NHS. He was meant to take a dental vehicle to the Basaki in Wolverhampton, and I was going to meet him there, and he didn't go in the end, because it was broken down. But the fact is that he was looking forward to it, which was great. Uh, and then the, the, the fantastic thing, the cherry on the cake, my sister wanted to come in the Gurdwara and she said, please, let me, Dad, let me go in. And she came in and put a little scarf and I took her upstairs and I gave her a big hug and she really liked it. And she's going to nag my dad for the next 13 weeks and say, because we've been invited, the family have been invited to have longer. And she's going to nag them rotten until they come in that Gurdwara and they have something to eat. So my dad is coming round, my dad understands, and my dad is very affectionate towards the Indian <coughs> culture. He's not actually very in favour at all of the Christian culture. So when I was a monk, and when I thought about becoming a Catholic priest, he did not like that at all. So it's nice that he's actually, he doesn't know that much about Sikhi, but he's got great affection to the Indian culture. And he told me about someone called Mahinda Singh at work, who used to bring him sweets, and he's been to his wedding, and all sorts of things. And that was lovely. Basically, he was talking about another Sikh in such a lovely way. And he, kept, he wouldn't stop talking about him when I saw him last week, last Sunday. It was so lovely. With my mother, that's a more complicated issue. She suffers from depression, and I try not to tell her too much, and I try to tell her gently. And I wanted to tell her in my own time, but I haven't, she hasn't seen me in the Dastai yet. I might send her a picture, but then that might be upsetting her even more, so I'm not sure what to do. But I did say I'm 26. I, if you see me, I'm going to have a Dastara, and I'm not trying to offend you, but I will have a Dastara. And she says, no one will employ you or anything. I work for an agency, and I've had shifts. And I've sent them my card. They've sent me a new card with Lyndon Singh Barrington on it. And they've seen Singh, and they've seen the turban, and they ring me up to give me shifts. So, yeah. I have to say, when I wear my uh, African triangular Dastara, that is... People think I'm Sikh. I went out in my barna, which was a, a navy blue round the star with uh, clothes like this, Makota pajama. I was only, the first time, I was only out of the house 15 minutes. Someone said, Salam alaikum. <laughs> I said, Brother, it's so good to see you, brother. <laughs> brother, good to see you. Uh, so, and I couldn't remember the alaikum salam, so I said, Salam. 
<laughs> but if I wear this, it was funny. I uh, little some little kids walking down the street, and they said, "Oh, that's a Bin Laden." I thought, "Oh, here we go. Bin Laden's dead." And now I'm going to get it, aren't I? I'm going to learn the hard way. And this other kid next to him said, "No, no, that's a Sikh." He said, "You idiot! It's a Sikh." And I thought, "Yes." Why, well, Guru? You know. So I was really, really happy when I heard that. So not everyone understands, but for some reason, this seems to say Mr. Singh and the round one says Mr. Khan. I think it's because there are not that many Gora Sikhs, there are not many Sikhs out there who are white at all. But there are white men who are becoming Muslim. They might already be, they might be white and unborn into Islam, they might, whatever it is. But, but there are, they're not used to seeing white people who are Sikh. But, um, and, and you know, it's like on Shadi.com, you know, I find, uh, I find that there are lots and lots of Hindus there that would marry me, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, because they're, they're Hindu, they're, they're, they've got the caste system, but they're quite chilled out. And then I've got these people, uh, what is it, Jack and the Ramgadi is, and they say, no, 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 you're not, you're not. Uh, I've got declined f nine people. <laughs> Jack, 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 Ramgadi, Jack, 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 Jack. Well, I don't know who they are, but what I'm saying is, the cast, they're really, that's in, it's like, they don't even want a conversation with me. But the fact is, I'm not part of that panth, in it. I'm not part of that panth, so, I'm sorry, so. There is a man that wants, to marry, that wants me to marry his daughter from Punjab, but that's another story. So, shadi.com, be careful, you know. Um, so I'm just saying, there is a lot of, of casteism still. But the great thing is, because I'm born, I'm a Sikh now, born again Sikh, I suppose. I'm Sikh, you see. So I don't have a caste. Oh, shall I invent one? No, 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 no. Because now I'm Sikh. Someone said to me, you've got the best of both worlds. You're not born into the cult. You're not born into the culture. You're just born into the, you've got religion. Well, no, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of the Punjab. I'm, I want to go there, you know. But it's great that I'm not attached to that side of things. But I find a lot of people in Punjab are very interested. I was sitting at a stall at Basaki. And a few things got beautiful to stars, shaven, and they just came, they just came up to me, sat next to me, put their arms around me, had a photograph taken, didn't say a word, and just walked off. <laughs> and uh, Auntie G said to me, do you know those boys? And I said, no, Auntie, I'd never seen them before in my life, and she couldn't stop laughing. They were so nice to me, but I don't know who they are. They just sat next to me, massive grin, big photo, snap, 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 and that was the end of it. <laughs> so... What is not very nice is sometimes I'm on the bus and sometimes someone will say, stupid man, try and take a picture. Or they're very obvious early today. Someone's been, um, there were these, these white people, they were drunk and they were being stupid and they, they were pointing and they made it completely obvious. They weren't ashamed at all, you know. And I thought maybe I'm being paranoid, but that doesn't mean say they're not out to get me. You know? So, um, and I spoke to my friend and I said, is it me or were people just looking then? He said, no, they were looking. So I, I, affirm, I can confirm that. Sometimes I walk down the street and I'm wearing Mother Star and it just feels like no one's noticed me and it's absolutely brilliant. And then another time, for some reason, I walk up Barewood Road and... It, you know, and sometimes it's not nice, it's not like happy to see you. You've, you've offended, you've done something wrong, you've upset somebody, you've, you've ruffled someone's feathers, you, you're obviously taking the mick. So if I, if I smile, I'm taking the mick. If I'm serious, ah, we've made him upset now, I've offended him. But on the positive side, I, I don't care about any of that anymore. Maybe I do a bit, but I don't care because I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of the Distar. I, I was really, you know, this is one thing where I, I just texted a friend and he said, you know, wear it with pride. It's before taking Amra. And I thought, yeah, on top of this, on top of, regardless of everything else, am I allowed to be proud? Yes. Am I allowed to be offended? These people, can, I can be offended with me wearing a Distar. Can I be offended? Yeah, I can be offended. I'm very offended when they do that. But I rise above it because this is the world in which we live and we need to educate people about it. And it's nice that there are many occasions when the start is actually a conversation opener. And something that was, that was uh, said to me this week, um, have they gone? He said to me, Kul once said to me, be a non-stick pan. I love that. Don't let things stick. Don't hold grudges. I've not mastered it yet, but don't be a non-stick pan. So when you've got the pan in the bowl, and you're trying to get all the dirt off because it's stuck so tightly because the pan is keeping it there, and that's our hearts, and we can just 
get rid of it all, wash it off. Any more questions at all? I don't think so. Okay. So I hope we've not been controversial. I'm just saying as it is, and I'm saying what sometimes can happen. But, like I said, I'm just gaining more and more strength every day um, and finding where I really belong. So I thank you for inviting me, and I do apologise again for being late. It's lovely to come and feel really embraced by a community of people, first and foremost, who are now I'm related to my sisters, my brothers, <coughs> Paji, Benji, you know. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you understand why I use the Christian hymn. It was just to explain that. Trying to find God, thirsting for God, and for the water, so for Amrit. For the Christian hymn, that means baptism. For me, well, we do use the word baptism, don't we, in England? We say Sikhs are baptised. So it's exactly what it was. Why could you kick us? Why could you keep it?